it's been a while since I've done a technology video, and I've been trying to figure out a way to do something with my newly acquired 1080 Ti. Overclocking is kind of a chore with this card uh, due to the GPU boost 3.0 um, that NVIDIA has on the Pascal architecture, but there seems to be a ton of headroom for overclocking the memory on this card. So I'm going to be presenting a memory versus core clock um, performance scaling benchmark video. For consistency's sake, I'm going to be sticking with one benchmark, and it's not a game. I'm going to be using the Unigen Valley benchmark. The benchmark settings are going to be the Extreme HD preset at 1080p, 4K, and 1440p, and I'm getting the 4K and 1440p resolutions by using NVIDIA's uh, DSR. I had issues getting 1440p working in full screen mode, so all of those were done with the desktop resolution at 1440, and then I run the benchmark in a window. So don't worry about like, well, the performance might be better. It, all of the tests are run with that, so that's kind of like the baseline. The rest of the tests are run at full screen with DSR. The fan speeds are fixed at 100% on the uh, EVGA FTW3. So all those three fans are going full blast because I don't care about the, the noise. I just want to be able to compare the different clock settings. And in NVIDIA drivers, the textures are on high performance and the power management mode is on max performance. The memory overclocking was pretty easy to accomplish. All I had to do was set the offsets that I chose and then ran the tests and there was nothing strange going on. I decided to start with a plus 100 offset to the memory and then increase it by 50 megahertz until I hit 250 offset. Instead of using a standard offset for the core overclock, I decided to use a voltage point instead. For the Pascal architecture in EVGA Precision XOC, you can set um, the different voltage points to go to different uh, clock speeds. So the maximum um, voltage point for my card is 1093 millivolts. So at 1093, I set it to go to plus 25, plus 50, and plus 75 megahertz to the core. And the reason I decided to go with the voltage point was because I was experiencing variability in each test run by just setting plus 25, plus 50, plus 75, you know, using the slider. Basically, sometimes I would run a test and then a higher core overclock, higher core overclock, would result in a lower score. Um, for the average, the minimum, the max, and the actual Unigen Valley score. After I ran all of the separate tests for the memory and the core, I ran combined tests. So that would be like plus 75 to the core, plus 250 to the memory, um, as an example. And my goal was to find out which combination yielded the best results with stability uh, still being intact. And all of the results were stable. There, there was none of them that ever crashed. So that's a good thing. Once I was finished with the 1080p results, I ran the 1440p, then I ran the 4K. So that's a lot of testing to, to get through. A lot of the same benchmark over and over. My room was about 73 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 22.8 degrees Celsius, 24.1 degrees Celsius, if you want that comparable to, you know, whatever hardware temperature it would be. And I was controlled with a portable air conditioner in my room. So, enough preamble, let's get on with the results.
running through the 1080p benchmark proved really strange, but I powered through it. Sometimes um, a benchmark result would pop up and then it didn't make any sense, so I would rerun it. And then I would record the result that seemed to make sense. But after a while of doing that, I was just like, screw it. I have these other tests to run, so I'm just going to record these, even though they don't make any sense. And really, the numbers aren't wrong. It just has to do with the fact that the 1080 Ti isn't made for 1080p. There's a bottleneck, and that would be the CPU. I'm going to 1440p. The results started to make a whole lot more sense. Scaling the memory and the core helped a whole lot more fell in line with something that you would assume from an actual overclock. At 4K, everything made a whole lot more sense, more memory bandwidth, more speed, and you add more clock, and you get pretty much what you see in these graphs. After running those tests, I was kind of left wondering, look at our test results if there's not a comparison to do. Now, I didn't want to do a GPU comparison because that doesn't make any sense in terms of uh, what I'm trying to test here, which is, you know, scaling. So I have my Ryzen 1800X, and that's looking to be pretty popular right now. Not the 1800X in particular, but the Ryzen series as a whole. So, and it seems like a lot of people are recommending it uh, for builds just because the price is good. And I admit it's not a good comparison. My X99, which is a 5820K, overclocked, you know, quad channel memory and all that going against the Ryzen, but it's what I have and it's popular right now. Well, the numbers are pretty interesting, aren't they? I wouldn't run a 1080 Ti with Ryzen at all. I game at 1080p, and that's because I have a 1080p monitor, it goes up to 144 hertz, so those are where the numbers matter to me at 1080p. And I'd be severely bottlenecked with Ryzen. As you can see, I actually got kind of frustrated running these test results, and I didn't finish them. I didn't finish the 1080p results because it was just Per test variability was too high and it was just getting annoying. So I skipped along and I ran to 4K. And at 4K, you should be pretty fine. For my testing, I don't have high speed RAM. Uh, uh, when I got my Ryzen, I got it when it first came out. So I didn't put priority on that because we didn't, nobody knew what higher speed RAM could do for Ryzen. But remember, check the QVL list on your motherboard's website and then grab the high speed RAM you can and you should be good to go. So what did we learn from this? Well, you could get away with just overclocking your VRAM and in most cases still get a pretty decent boost in performance. Don't neglect any part of your system when over doing overclocking. If it's a number that could go higher with a slider adjustment, Test it out, try it out, see what happens. Overclocking is like tuning a car. It's like tuning anything you could tune. Some people do it for fun, others do it to brag. Me in particular, I do it because I wanna get the most out of my hardware from the moment that I have it. I don't run anything without an overclock. The 1080 Ti was a challenge because I generally dislike power state um, based auto magic overclocking and my fear in this technology was kind of unfounded for the most part. There is still performance to be had in other areas than just the core of the GPU. This video has been a ton of work. Along with the work I had to put into this video, I had to deal with my disabling ADHD. 
I had interest that waned, and I had to find an angle that would convince myself to finish this video. The hook for me was testing the Ryzen along with this GPU. Once I did that, I just had to finish up this script that I'm reading right here, and then record myself, which I'm doing right now. I'm not saying this so you feel bad and or, or anything. I'm just do, saying all this stuff in order to inform you of uh, what kind of work goes into a technical video like this. It was a lot of work. I had to run these benchmarks like 80 times, and that's counting the reruns also. And then I had to record the results, figure out how to present the data in a meaningful way, um, which was pretty difficult to figure out. If you appreciated all this work and you learned something, check out my Patreon so I could bring you more content just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.